What's up everybody? This is the Clam. That's how every YouTuber starts. What's up guys? This is here. We're going ahead and smash the like button. But regardless, this is Clown World News. You already know what it is. This is the lockdown edition because we are still locked down for another six days. For an impersonation, I don't know. We don't, we don't need to talk about. It. I've already talked about it on the Patreon, but this video is for my patrons because you guys are actually awesome. Thank you so much for supporting me, and uh, I just wanted to make sure you guys didn't get gypped. So I'm still be going to be making the Clown World news and the Clown World news roundups, especially, so you guys can have an idea of what I think the fuck is going on. But again, of course, take everything with a grain of salt. You know whatever so i just want to shout out these guys yo mitch was the first one mitch kathy michael missy missy and batfly big big thank you al hayes and js these guys have been send, sending me so much good info really been helping me out with putting stuff together the monk an ugly sob mark anderson patricia that's, that's also my mom's name don't dox me and wes yo shout out wes i believe for uh, hooking it up with an awesome graphic that I will be using for Clown World News. So thank you guys so much. Just wanted to name you all real quick. But let's get into the news. Let's just jump right in because we got a bunch of we got a bunch of bullshit to talk about today. And I think that there's so much more bullshit that I don't think I we'll be able to talk about all the bullshit in the world. I don't know if that's ever possible. Here we already have people like factcheck.org coming out and saying CDC did not admit only six percent of recorded deaths from COVID nineteen. Already, we can see them moving the the goalposts because that's not quite what was in, you know what was claimed. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention hasn't drastically reduced the number of deaths attributed to COVID-19. No, no one was claiming that necessarily. We're suggesting that the CDC has claimed that only six percent of COVID deaths were directly related to only COVID-19, with no other comorbidities. That's the claim. But posts making that bogus claim have been circulating widely with the help of President Donald Trump, who retweeted one such claim on August 30th. Well, thanks, Donnie. I actually appreciate that help. Because one of the, the most bullshit things out there in the world, yeah, it might not. These riots suck. Uh, they definitely do. But the riots are in, like, key places. You know, and the media makes it seem as if the riots are everywhere. I've heard friends of me be like, yo, can you even go outside without getting shot at? It's like, no, America's not that crazy. But the lockdown is pretty much everywhere. And the lockdown is some bullshit because we can objectively verify that COVID is nowhere near what they were claiming it was. Yet we still, here we are, lockdown. What's up with that? Twitter has since removed the original tweet. Of course they did. <laughs> Which came from an account dedicated to the pro-Trump conspiracy theory QAnon. We gotta throw that under the bus. It just wouldn't be, we just couldn't possibly... We have to make it seem as bad as possible. So reminder, he's with QAnon. But the claim is still readily available on all major social media platforms. In fact, the same QAnon account that posted the now deleted tweet includes a screenshot version featuring the president's retweet. The post Trump highlighted said this week the CDC quietly updated the COVID number to admit that only 6% of all 153,000 deaths recorded actually died from COVID. That's 9,000 to about wow, whatever death. The other 94% had two to three other serious illnesses and the overwhelming majority were of very advanced age. But that's not what the CDC information says. Except that is what the CDC information says. I went ahead and pulled it up. Here it is. It's right here. For 6% of the deaths, COVID-19 was the only cause mentioned. For deaths with conditions or, case or causes in addition to COVID-19, on average, there was 2.6 additional conditions or causes per death. The number of deaths with each condition or cause shown. And then if you click on this, you'll find the table. It's overwhelmingly a majority of elderly. But regardless, we're going to shut that down because that's annoying. But people want to fact check it. Now, of course, you will probably see, to be fair, you will see the people post this information and, and have it be like, you know, like this, that would be, uh, the CDC came out and said that there's only this many deaths. That's not what the CDC said. And that's not necessarily what this means. Just because that they have other comorbidities, other conditions, that doesn't mean that COVID wasn't a huge factor in their death. And that's assuming, of course, that we believe the canon. I'm just trying to, you know, use empathy and try to understand people, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt and all that shit. 
because there are some people who will take this information and run with it and they'll run straight into a wall and you just gotta be careful because whenever you get a foothold with information like this you gotta make sure that you just use like it's a star shaped puzzle hole and you gotta make sure you only use the star shaped puzzle hole you don't want to go ahead and just try to hammer in a square into there I don't know if that's a good metaphor <laughs> But yeah, regardless, uh, this is the pertinent information. But let's look at what, what else is going on. This is in August 31st. It has come to this. Ignore the CDC, says the New York Times. <laughs> the agency's new guidelines are wrong. So states have to step up on their own to suppress the coronavirus. They're wrong. The agency's new guidelines are wrong. So we got to listen to them because they're the authority. But then when they disagree with what you think, then we have to listen to you because you're the authority. Who's the authority anymore? Is anybody in charge of this ship? Who's running this bitch? I don't think anybody knows. <laughs> Let's move on. We got, we got lots of funny little tweets and pictures. And here's Seth MacFarlane, you know, famed creator of Family Guy and all those other shows that are totally different than Family Guy. Hey, but the Orville actually is a decent show. I do like the Orville. This is what comes from a country that undervalues education in the first place. People cannot seem to grasp that a flu vaccine is not about you. It's about everyone else. It's the same reason you wear a mask in public. The selfishness here is staggering. Hundreds of protesters gather against new flu vaccine mandate in Massachusetts. What's staggering to me is, is how many of these blue checkmark motherfuckers come out and say... It's not about you. It's about everyone else. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, my health isn't the responsibility of everyone else around me. And it's always these weird things. It's always these weird, subtle, nuance like not nuance isn't the right word. Esoteric, like things like like virology. Do you think Seth MacFarlane is a master in virology? Do you think he understands RNA DNA replication? You know, and the, the fucking the PR testing, or whatever the Dr. Kerry Mullis testing, PR and testing, whatever. Regardless, the whole thing is just it's absurd. I don't understand it. And because I don't understand it, I'm not going to do it. From what I do understand, it is not necessary. I know plenty of people who have never been vaccinated since they were kids. Very healthy individuals. In fact, like above average healthy and i'm not saying that vac vaccines in general are bad i'm just saying that the idea that we all need them is that's a bit much and if you're gonna force them on you what happened to my body my choice the, the hypocrisy is literally just whenever it's convenient we're gonna create this argument and then whenever it's not convenient we're just gonna say somebody else created that argument it wasn't us and it's ah this is bullshit so yeah, if there's if there's hundreds of protesters gather outside for the new there's a new flu vaccine mandate, that's some bullshit. The hundreds of protesters, that's good. Good shit. I wish there was more. I wish there was thousands. My video got attacked in the one I was covering the Berlin one. Maybe it was maybe it was related to the COVID conspiracy. Maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist, you know? Or maybe it was, you know, genuinely just like some like a I was actually impersonating somebody. I don't know. There seems to be a lot of actual suppression of COVID information, as I'm sure you're aware. Whatever, let's move on. Seth MacFarlane. What, what happened, man? You used to be cool. Nancy Pelosi seen without mask inside San Francisco hair salon. But, but you know what she was wearing? That stupid neck scarf. I swear, she has vampire marks, bro. She has vampire teeth marks and she can't let you see them. And or she has a giant Adam's apple. I don't know. I don't know why she always wears that thing. But she's not wearing a mask inside a hair salon in San Francisco. I'm pretty sure that's illegal, right? Uh, I don't know. They, these people don't. They don't They don't drink their own Kool-Aid. They don't pee in their own pools or whatever. The I don't think, I don't think that's the right metaphor. <laughs> But yeah, they're not. They're gonna tell you one thing. They're gonna do another thing. Like, what, has Seth MacFarlane taken all these flu shots and vaccines? Is is he? You're not wearing a mask in your profile pic, dog. Hillary is. 
So let's move on. That one time CNN was reporting from Gulf Shores, Alabama, and the anchor wore his mask while on camera and immediately removed it when not on camera. Like, we see this happening over and over and over again. How often does it have to happen? How much information do you need before you, like, start to feel like, oh, shit, am I a conspiracy theorist? Is that what's happening? Am I getting red-pilled? Is that <laughs> am I getting red-pilled right now? My red pill radar is going off with my tingle. It's tingling. So, like, I, I read something that was pretty poignant. And a friend shared this with me or he posted it to a story and I read it. And it was basically like, you have to admit, the reason why you're wearing a mask is, is not because you made an informed decision, because you went in and looked at the medical information and decided and, and what was best for your health. The reason why you're wearing a mask is because somebody came on TV wearing an official looking outfit with all the credentials and he told you to and you, you it was enforced you couldn't go to your stores to do this that and the other without wearing it so you wore it now so the same reason is you're not going to just find some medical information educate yourself and then learn oh shit i guess we don't have to you, that's not going to be when you take the mask off the only thing that's going to make these people take the mask off is if somebody official looking gets up there wearing all this fancy outfit all the credentials and says you no longer need to wear it that's literally the only thing that will like allow these people to break the cognitive dissonance it's the only thing because it's the only thing they listen to oh look here's a bunch of uh, news reports about them telling us not to wear a mask <laughs> the same people telling us that you gotta wear a mask we're telling us not to wear a mask interesting interesting <laughs> why wearing a face mask might actually increase your risk of coronavirus infection you don't say wearing a petri dish on the end of your face never washing it and just keeping it in your pocket nobody like has any sort of like checkup on like hey when was the last time you had that mask oh dude i i walk to the store and along my walk there's masks on the ground like that's got to be an environmental hazard of some sort but maybe maybe the chipmunks and squirrels and frogs can pick it up and then they can practice whatever the fuck safety this is supposed to be. So here we have in March, we have two weeks to minimize COVID-19 spread, Governor Edwards says of Louisiana. Now remember the timeline because it's easy to forget. This is April. Statewide stay-at-home order extended two more weeks, May. Next two weeks will determine phase two, June. As COVID-19 cases increase, Louisiana will stay in phase two. John Bell Edwards responds to petition to cancel emergency order. Silly is not the right word. These people need to be removed from their positions of power because these people do not have a spine. They don't have a backbone or for the younger people out there, they ain't got no integrity. They ain't <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know what South Park is for young people anymore. Like, I'm old as shit, and I well, I love South Park. I think, isn't it weird that we don't have South Park right now at this time? The world is literally some South Park shit. But also, South Park isn't entirely, like, the most based of all shows. It's very liberal, but I do appreciate its satire. Uh, the satire is one of my favorite forms of comedy. There was just that moment during the 2016 election where they broke character and they just looked at the screen and said, like, you guys have to vote for Hillary. You have to. And I was just like, wait, wait, what happened to the, either it's all okay to make fun of or none of it is. Why are you guys picking sides, man? I mean, I guess everyone wants to take their platform and, and try to change the world and influence it, whatever. Moving on. This is a beautiful little post. Look at this little, you ever seen these things? <laughs> These are the people calling you a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> it's like the same thing I think about in regards to electricity. I don't think we know what the fuck we're talking about. You know, like if you read a little bit of Tesla and you just like look into some of his ideas, you could even think about like Tartarian mud flood ideas of their technology, supposedly. It's like we don't understand how Wi-Fi EMF works. We don't understand how to, like, people People still be building houses with their bedrooms, their headboard, on one side of the, and then the walls here, and on the other side is their refrigerator with the back of the fridge pointed right at their heads. 
they like don't comprehend why they can't sleep well with the with the router in the same room they can't comprehend why they get headaches because they just don't understand shit and i don't think people understand you know general health and virology and how diseases spread the terrain Bichamp versus pasteur because i don't know if this is going to help i think you just get you keep recycling your own air I don't know, it's retarded. But these are the people who are calling you a conspiracy theorist. If you happen to be expressing your ideas. I think a lot of people have these ideas that I'm expressing right now. I just don't think that they are in a position where they feel comfortable being able to express it. And that's totally okay. I totally understand that. Uh, I think we're a silent majority. And I believe the silent majority is going to win by a landslide. But we'll actually talk about that at the end. So the NPR... Oh no, National Public Radio. President Trump declined to condemn the actions of the suspected 17-year-old shooter of three protesters against police brutality in Kenosha, claiming, without evidence, that it appeared the gunman was acting in self-defense. Without evidence? What planet are these people living on? What do you mean without evidence? How much more evidence do you need? Anytime someone in my comments, I get them daily, if not by the hour, somebody will say, either, either like, yeah, free Kyle, this is obviously self-defense. Other people will say, like, this, this isn't self-defense because he crossed state lines and did this, that, the other. And it's like, I'm asking, the, I'm asking these people, an open question to those guys or, or girls who have these opinions. And what in your mind, what in your opinion is self-defense? Because I don't know what self-defense is, if not this. If not what Kyle did, then what? Then what? <laughs> it really just seems like some people have decided that I am a part of a political party, or a, sort of a movement, and anything that goes against the movement, I have to disagree with. I have to try to find a way to where it's wrong. Now, if Kyle had just randomly shot these people, I would not be defending him like I am. I absolutely wouldn't. If the evidence showed that Kyle just shot at them without being chased, without having guns fired behind him, without being mobbed, without having a gang jump up on him or a gun pointed at his head, I would not be defending him. I don't care if it makes the Republicans look bad. I don't care if it makes the Patriots look bad. It's because I have a backbone. And I don't have any affiliation. I don't have any loyalty to the party you know I, it's not for the queen for the king i fight for the realm you know <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> well, that's some nerdy shit but the point is is that like uh i just care about what happened and it, this is obviously self-defense and there's a lot of evidence npr i don't know if maybe you haven't seen it because they are trying to suppress it in some regard oh but here's an author of npr one author's argument in defense of looting in her new book writer vicky orsterwal argues that looting is a powerful tool to bring about real lasting change in society yeah and that change is probably not the one you're thinking but yeah let's just uh let's not dude if when i looked at this thumbnail initially i thought this was like a skyscraper this is a flag and then this was like a street but I now realize upon looking at it that this is a shopping aisle. Loot in defense of looting. Wow. It it's so hard not to believe there's a giant conspiracy to escalate and instigate these sort of issues in America through the mainstream media. It's so hard not to. How could you when people are literally saying it's okay to loot? That looting will bring about real lasting change in society. Looting is dangerous for those who loot. It's the, it sucks for the businesses. I mean, if Amazon said, all right, guys, we're going to do an open looting day. You can come to the warehouse at Amazon and everyone can loot. We're going to do for uh, two hours. And after two hours, we're going to shut it down. But come on in. But that's not what that's not what is happening. Amazon is not doing one of those weird like Toys R Us. You get to just run through the store and grab whatever you can in a minute. They're not doing that. It's all it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of smaller stores just being absolutely ravaged. And if they don't have anything good inside, they get burned down. Here's some spin. 
I got a wheelie chair, but I'm connected to too many cords. I would probably break my computer. A father and a 26-year-old skateboarder, the protesters, the protesters killed in Kenosha. A father and a 26-year-old skateboarder. The father, so we can connect to the older people who read whatever magazine this is. And a 26-year-old skateboarder, so we can connect to people who like skateboarding, the younger crowd, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's relevant to bring up their history. Just like I don't think that, you know, you bring up what happened before an incident, an altercation took place. That's just like a character assassination. Bringing up the fact that Kyle hit that girl or whatever to try to discredit what he did at his self-defense case. Nothing matters except for what happened the moment before Kyle shot. That is what ha that's what matters. Nothing else but directly the moments before he shot because that's that's what caused the shooting to take place and that's what will be figured out of self defense or not. The two men shot dead when white armed extremists disrupted a Black Lives Matter protest and at least one agitator opened fire on a group of protesters in Kenosha have been identified. Well, when you word it like that, it sure sounds awful. But that's not even really what happened. Also, we got to add it that white and disrupted a Black Lives Matter protest. I hate that. Like, you are race baiting. You're instigating. Race had nothing to do with it. All the people that were shot were white. And I... Uh, it's just retarded. And open fire on a group of protesters. That's not what happened. <laughs> to say it like that is like... If, if I wanted to say this in the opposite direction, I could say that like entirely minding his own business walking home from the library Kyle Rittenhouse was attacked by a gang of wild anarchists who tried to set fire to his shoes and then like, you know like that didn't happen either and this isn't really what happened but whatever it's been they're gonna do what they're gonna do everyone they are trying so hard to make Kyle Rittenhouse look like a bad person look like this case is ridiculous it's almost like this is this is similar to COVID in that it exposes these sort of mainstream media and like people in positions of power for ignoring objectivity. They, they've already chosen a side and they're picking whatever action they choose to do based on what side they belong to. So here's something that happens. This is what the media loves to do. They spin it. And now that I'm not on YouTube at the moment, I feel like we could talk about this. Now, of course, I do not promote racism. I don't enjoy it. I think that the best way to get it to get through it, racial tensions, is to stop talking about it, like what Morgan Freeman said. But there is this sort of trend in the mainstream media. They love it. They sure love to bring it up. So here's what actually happened. A black man tries to fight a white Vietnam veteran. The vet says he doesn't want to, doesn't want to fight until he's forced to do so. He then proceeds to fuck up the black guy. And then when they made the movie about this event, they switched it up so it's two white skinheads start abusing a Mexican guy that doesn't want any trouble. He's eventually forced to do so and proceeds to fuck them up. This is what this is what happens. Like I've you've probably heard that there's like a weird anti-white agenda in the mainstream media. I don't like to acknowledge it or talk about it, but it does seem like there is something to that, that white culture and that I don't know, like the white man is so demonized. Like you can you can say anything you want about white men and you will be okay to do so. But you can't say anything you want about anyone else. There's even like supposedly, like, there's like professors coming out and saying that like black people can't be racist, that only white people can be racist. It's just like, that's racist. <laughs> so here we go. Check this out. Here's a nice little compilation of blue check marks on Twitter saying that they hate white people. Yes, I am racist. I hate white people. This is why I hate white people. I hate white people. Next level Nazi stuff's right there. I hate white people. Racism against white people is impossible, but if it were possible, it would be good. As the dinosaurs were going extinct, they became confused, fearful, angry, and lashed out, not knowing the era was over. Hashtag angry white guys. Yeah, this is a huge list. A huge, huge, huge list. So it's not like it's not real. It's definitely real. I don't know how they're allowed to say this. White people are dumb. Like, if, if I said black people are dumb, can you imagine? Like, that's insane. Like, that's so racist. 
It literally smells like eggs and vinegar when I walk outside. I hate white people. You notice a lot of these are white people. I don't know, man. I just I don't want to like indulge in this too much because I think it's really a fucking travesty. But what's up with this? What is up with the demonizing of white people? Do they? All right, you want to get a far left conspiracy theory? Just because I just watched that mud flood video, I just made the mud flood one. So here's a theory. The Tartarians and the leftover remnants of that race of people who had a nice sort of society where people lived to live and not live to work, maybe a lot of them were white. And then maybe, no, nah, I don't even want to encourage it just because it's just like it gets too close to some crazy, crazy shit. Because I, I think that there's a lot of brilliant people in all races. There's a lot, a lot of honorable, amazing contributions and that the way out of this racism nonsense isn't by all the black people go back to Africa it's not that for sure it is not an ethno state by any means but it almost seems like they there is a culture that America was nearly founded on you could say or at least modern America or whatever where it was a largely a bunch of white people white culture and this is the culture that that's why I mean that they said eggs and vinegar that's why they're making fun. That's what they're making fun of. But that culture also has things like a nuclear family, you know, the white picket fence, the American dream, the mother staying at home, the dad, like, all that stuff. That's white culture, apparently, you know. And I think that perhaps outside forces, this isn't far fetched, that maybe they want to disrupt anything that has to do with that because that creates a strong society. And I don't think it has to be white people that do it. I just, I just think that if you're aiming, that's where it's concentrated. Because there's plenty of other races, especially in America, that have great sort of uh, societal building, you know, family structures. There's a lot of them. So I don't want to say any, uh, like, this is too, you tiptoe, you got to walk on eggshells when you do this. Like, vinegar and eggshells, because this shit is, can quickly lead to some crazy shit if you're not careful. But yeah, they're allowed to all say this. Can you cite a, si a single recent example of a prominent media political fi figure expressing racism against white people? Can I cite a single recent example of a prominent media or political figure? How about all these blue check marks? Here you go. How about all of this? <laughs> That's cognitive dissonance. That's living in an echo chamber and not understanding like what is actually going on. Well, let's move on. So here we go, the November, this is just one theory, but this is November 4th, 2020, Trump wins in a 42 state landslide. Democrats refuse to concede. BLM, Antifa, Communist Democrats riot harder than ever before. Many innocent people die. Dems claims the death, deaths were necessary to save our democracy. Trump accepts new term and, and enrages left even more. Retaliation attacks begin from conservative pay. Yeah, so this, this is how they theorize that some sort of civil war or race war will happen but I don't I don't agree with this uh, take on it but I do think it is very 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 possible that Donald Trump will win and then the Democrats will not accept it they'll, then they'll throw in their fake mail-in ballots and later on they'll say that no Biden actually won and that during that time there'll be literal armies from either side but my my thinking why I'm optimistic is that Trump has the precedent because he's already, you know, in office and he has obviously a lot of people seem to be supporting him and want the law and order. So I think that if that did come down, that would be the final sort of uh, explosion that would allow Trump to sweep up uh, the drain the swamp completely. Because at that point, they'd be laying their hand. If they tried to do a military coup of the United States, it'd be it's. It could be, it could be, it could lead to a very bad series of years, or it could be over in a few weeks, honestly. And you gotta, you gotta think that the NSA has been tracking the, the like the DNC and knows all their plans, and knows what they're gonna do. So, just keep that in mind. November fourth, it's gonna be a crazy time, absolutely crazy. So Antifa, defund the police so we can terrorize anyone we want without prevention. Gun, gun owners no longer prevented from using lethal force by the police. 
So this meme right here illustrates why I'm optimistic. Because I believe there's a silent majority. And even without the federal help, which we would absolutely be getting by like, a huge amount, I think that the Patriots could easily get rid of Antifa. I think just by default, by nature, most Patriots are moderate, more moderate leaning, and they don't go to protest. I've, I've had friends tell me like, you know, the protests and the COVID, it's a, it's a purge. It's a purge of stupid people because you won't find any smart person at these riots. You're never going to find a smart person at a riot. Like, uh, it's, I'm, not, I'm not trying to like say that people going to defend their businesses aren't smart people and things like that. I'm just saying that by and large, I'm not going to a counter protest, even if I agree with it. I'm not going to a protest, even if I agree with it. It would have to be mandatory vaccines and then I would give a fuck. But anything else, I don't really care. Not not really into it. So let's let's go ahead and get some eye bleach. Check out this this little kid's awesome crochet predator. <laughs> I just I love this I love cool things, creativity, things taken to their extreme. This is crochet to the extreme. And then we'll wipe it up with uh this. I think this is one of the most badass pictures, sculptures I've ever seen. It's just fucking dope, man. Like look at this shit. I believe good wins. So if you want to hear a far left theory before you go, just because I watched the mud flood video and it just kind of got my, it's got me thinking crazy stuff. But there's two main ideologies, and you can look at ancient Sumerian history to understand them a little bit better. But there's Enki and their Enlil, and these are sort of metaphors, but they could also be real people. I don't know. But one of them liked man, wanted what's best for man. The other one wanted man to be slaves. So there's two ways of thinking. Live to live, live to work. Now, there's things called global resets. That's like an idea of the mud flood. So a global reset that happened recently got rid of the Tartarian Empire, supposedly, which was all about living to live. They replace that with this currency, this meat base, this uh, oil and automobile society. And that created and that brought us back into the live to work. And now that was about 250 years ago, maybe 300 years ago, roughly, give or take. And we're now getting ready to shift a paradigm shift to a global reset to live to live. And it's going to be a, a dramatic process in switching. But I, I believe that it is possible that is where we're headed because I believe that naturally good overcomes and the powers of good are much stronger than the powers of evil. It just, if you get complacent, you can allow the, the powers of evil to corrupt enough within good to set it back before it naturally has to bubble back up. It's almost like entropy in a way, but in reverse, like good just good is order and it just has to come out of all of this chaos so yeah that's my theory that's why i'm optimistic i mean maybe some other shit will happen and it could all suck but whatever all right so i hope you guys enjoyed that uh, sorry to waste 33 minutes of your time i don't know if i had talked about anything relevantly interesting but much love to you guys uh this is for the 13 people in my patreon <laughs> So I don't. Maybe I'll post these to uh, YouTube when I'm unbanned in six days. But oh, it's 11:11. Make a wish. I wish you guys would call your mom. All right. Peace. Take care.